I welcome you all for this course Applied Thermodynamics. We are in the module 3 that is internal combustion engine. Till date we have covered 7 lectures. Today we are in the 8th lecture that is known as heat transfer analysis in engines. So, in this uh, lecture that is on heat transfer analysis on engines, we will uh, discuss about the following subtopics. First, energy distribution and engine temperatures, then we will uh, look into the heat transfer aspects in engine components mainly intake system, combustion system and exhaust system. After that we will discuss about the effect of engine operating variables on heat transfer. And finally, we have this we will discuss about this concept of adiabatic engines. So, let us start the first segment that is energy distribution and engine temperatures. Till date we have covered most of the IC engine concepts and we find that it is the heat that comes from the uh, fuel that is getting utilized for the production of soft power. So, heat transfer process uh, happens to be a very crucial part or crucial topic in the engine operations and to have a efficient engine operations we need to have a proper control of this heat transfer. But what happens heat is a low, low grade energy but soft power is high grade energy. So, complete conversion is not possible, but by the second law, but what we can do is that we can minimize the losses in the uh, heat. So, as an estimate if you look into uh, the total energy that comes from the fuel only 35 percent of the chemical energy is enters as a crankshaft work. So, from this figure we can say 35 percent of energy uh, we get from the uh, power output from the shaft and remaining uh, 30 percent that goes to the uh, heat dissipation in various modes. And lastly the uh, last segment that is 30 percent of heat goes in the exhaust product. So, it can it can imagine to be it as a loss. In fact, there are in addition to this loss there are other losses which accounts for about 5 percent roughly 5 percent. So, this we can encounter as a uh, friction losses and these are irrecoverable. So, we cannot get back, but what we can get is that we can tap the heat from the exhaust flow and try to see if, if we can improve the energy efficiency of any IC engine cycles. So, that is the uh, entire philosophy of discussion for today. So, let us go one by one. So, uh, for in the energy distribution topic we see need that heat transfer is a very crucial topic and it needs attention. And, but uh, at the same time when you talk about heat transfer we require cooling mechanisms because when your engine is running at hot conditions we uh, we require some cooling mechanism because these hot parts of the engine com components they incur thermal endurance and that uh, due to which uh, there is some thermal fatigue due to high temperatures at different locations. So, we require continuous cooling mechanism as well. So, heat transfer and cooling both are the uh, topic of discussion for heat transfer study. So, this another plot also in the similar line where it talks about how the intake fuel energy is uh, getting utilized uh, as a speed uh, as a function of speed. So, first is brake power we have coolant load we can see the friction losses heat loss to the surroundings exhaust enthalpy. So, it drops I mean, uh, so, so for this this particular uh, energies they are getting uh, as a function of speed. 
So, whatever I have explained, I have, uh, this is written in the uh, mathematical form. So, first thing power available from the uh, engine that is we can say it is a soft power, it is a function of fuel flow rate and heating value of the fuel. Then we can also calculate the brake thermal efficiency. So, that is and in this brake thermal efficiency we also include the combustion efficiency with respect to fuel. Now, including all this the total power that we are going to get that is if you take energy balance or audit equation you can say it is P it consists of the work terms, work terms comes as a soft power accessories that means in the IC engine will have lot of accessories. So, this also takes some work and there is also irrecoverable losses that is due to friction. So, these are in terms of uh, work, but in terms of uh, heat the law we have losses, losses in different modes of heat transfer another part goes that as a exhaust. Okay. Now, if the, for a give any engine uh, this uh, these are the some rough estimates that soft power is about 25 to 40 percent ir irrespective of the fact what type of improvement mechanism you do. Accessories normally consume 10 percent of the power, uh, friction also uh, losses is about 10 percent. And now, if you look at the exhaust flow that the exhaust lost. Uh, uh, that is energy lost in the exhaust it is about 20 to 45 percent. Heat loss energy lost by heat transfer is again in the similar number 10 to 35 percent and this has a bas basically three components again that is coolant loss, oil loss, ambient loss. So, these split out numbers are roughly in the range like coolant is in the 10 to 30 percent, oil is in the range of uh, 5 to 10 uh, 15 percent ambient loss is about 2 to 10 percent. So, these are this is the rough estimate that what we can say these are the uh, energy balance equation. Or many people call it as a energy audit, audit for engines. Uh, so, this is how we deal with in a quantitative form uh, apart uh, uh, as energy losses. Now, when you think about energy loss, we, we also have to think about the cooling. Uh, here, there are two important consequences we have to have a, a very efficient engine operation we expect that engine should run as hot as possible. At the same time we also have limitations in engine materials because they also uh, undergo cyclic uh, um, loading of uh, heat and the different components experiences uh, different temperatures and across the cycle. So, because of this reason there is always a thermal endurance on the materials. So, in that case if you if you want to uh, reduce those thermal endurance we need to provide proper cooling arrangement. So, one end we require cooling arrangement other end we require expect the engine should run as hot as possible. So, there is a balancing uh, approach that is followed. So, people used different cooling mechanisms that means when you look at high compressor ratio diesel engines they are cooled by water jackets. When you are using air cooled engines uh, like small uh, SI engines they use fins because air as a uh, air as a cooling medium for this. So, cooling as well as heat transfer both are the simultaneous requirement for engine operations. Now, let us look at uh, engine temperatures. Now, uh, till date uh, we know that we, there is heat transfer, but heat for heat transfer to occur we require temperatures that uh, there should be temperature difference for the heat transfer to occur. Uh, now, for a given engine let us see if you look at this figure and this of course, a schematic figure which is shown that inside a cylinder there is a piston and uh, we have intake valve 
we have intake valve, exhaust valve, spark plug or, or spark plug or we can have a fuel injector or we have a intake manifold, exhaust manifold, so this is a kind of passage. And all these things if you look at they have different temperatures. For instance, the spark plug is at spark plug location with uh, almost an average temperature of 600 degree centigrade is expected. Exhaust valve also about similar number 700 degree centigrade is expected. When the exhaust flow comes out this this is about 450 degree centigrade. When the air or, or the intake system in the intake system we require preheating so temperature is roughly about 60 degree centigrade. And of course, there are engine oils and all that um, is used in the engine operation. They have also about temperature of 70 degree centigrade. Uh, piston phase always experiences a temperature of 300 degree centigrade. So, all these numbers tells us that in the engine cylinder uh, along with the piston, they have different values of temperatures at any any cyclic location. I mean these are, these are roughly what we can say is the average temperature in a given cycle of operation. And in some cases like when during the uh, maybe if you look at this particular figure which is temperature versus crank angle plot, uh, here it talks about intake, compression, combustion, expansion and exhaust stroke and during after combustion temperature could be as high as 2500 degree centigrade. But of course, this particular time scale is slow, but still we have we can have 2500 degree centigrade as the peak temperatures. So, such a temp for such temperatures, if you look in terms of engine speed also they are going to change because the cylinder wall, piston phase, exhaust valve, exhaust gas for all the cases if you can see with increase in the engine speed these numbers also go up. So, this roughly says that what are the typical temperatures that we are going to expect during a engine operations. So, of course, when we see this kind of temperatures, the predominant modes of heat transfer are also relevant such as conduction, some places it is conduction, some places it is convection and, and few occasions also that is radiation. So, for example, uh, we can say conduction is mainly in the during the intake system uh, and mostly other cases it is convection and radiation effect becomes predominant when the temperature is too high. So, accordingly uh, respective modeling nor is normally done to account or to calculate the magnitude of the heat flux. So, this is also a similar nature plot of similar nature where we are only thinking about the temperatures that is encountered within the piston. So, it is a crown at uh, these are the some uh, of the piston rings where it is located, this is piston walls and somewhere it is the bottom of the piston, that is top of the piston. Of course, the top of the piston is at very high temperature closely about 430 to 450 degree centigrade and if you look at these temperatures with respect to the time, I mean continuously uh, if you look these temperatures for engine running operation this temperature is also go up, but not for at all locations at major location at, at, and in fact because of this reason uh, uh, there are always some hot spot locations within the engine that needs attention. And uh, the another effect of this temperature is what we call as thermal cracking or many times we call as thermal endurance that happens uh, because material uh, is going to uh, take the feel of this temperature continuously in a cyclic manner. Of course, another location of the piston is crown and it is the crucial part with respect to piston in terms of temperature. Now, here uh, the effect of temperature what we can, can see in the engine wall. So, first we saw the overall uh, locations, then we saw the piston, now it is the engine wall uh, or cylinder wall of the engine. So, this is one of the cross section of the cylinder wall. What we can see here is that there is a gap, I mean gap means it is nothing but a gas film. This particular region is nothing but the gas film 
which we call this as a stagnant layer, which we call this as a uh, stagnant layer of gases which is at very high temperatures. Now, what the most important fact is that when you look at this gas temperature, they are roughly about 2800 degree Kelvin, whereas the wall temperature is close to about 450 degree Kelvin. Now, here you can say that within this stagnant layer of gas, there is a huge uh, gradient in terms of temperatures. Now, when there is a huge gradient of temperature, it mainly occurs due to this gas film or this gas film has this heat convective heat transfer coefficient Hg, which varies significantly uh, in a very small region. So, this delta x region is very small and within this delta x region, the convective heat transfer coefficient varies drastically. This is what we see is the inner side of the piston uh, or inner side of the cylinder. But if you look at the outer side, the outer side is cooled by the air film and where the temp expected temperature is could be around 300 to 400 degree Kelvin. So, roughly that means if you say uh, from the inner wall of the cylinder to the outer wall, this part is mainly conduction. So, heat transfer or this drop in temperature that is mainly due to conduction and here in the inner wall it is convection and at the outer wall also it is convection. So, temperature drops may be from, from 400 to um, the uh, uh, from 400 to maybe that room um, cooling water temperature. So, this could be atmospheric. So, so that means from this side we have atmosphere. So, if it is air the, or that temperature could be about 30 to 40 degree centigrade. So, that means from 400 degree centigrade to 30 to 40 degree centigrade, it the the your, your air film or cooling water takes out the heat. Uh, this is another plot of similar sense. What uh, uh, in which it is mentioned that when you look at uh, the uh, engine temperature distributions, we need to relook into this temperature distribution for all parts. So, major consequence we have cylinder wall, piston phase, exhaust valve and exhaust gas and exhaust gas is important because we, many a times when people used to take this exhaust gas as a tool to tap the exhaust heat or that concept is used as a waste heat recovery. Now, if, if no cooling is provided there will be no heat flow to the uh, so that the engine cylinder would reach the average temperature of the cylinder gas. With adequate cooling, the cylinder temperature can be maintained at the optimum level. So, this is the important conclusion that we have to say that uh, cooling is also not uh, cooling should not be ignored. Now, let us go one by one, then first thing we will talk about the heat transfer in the intake system. So, if you look at the hint intake system for CI engine, uh, then it is the only air that is drawn into the cylinder and if you look at SI engine, it is the air and fuel mixture that is drawn into the engine cylinder and in the both the cases, always it is preferred that either air has to be preheated or the fuel air fuel charge has to be preheated. So, when uh, in a CI engines normally separate mechanism is used to preheat the air, but in a SI engine since the units are small, so we have the electrical heating system uh, to uh, we have the electrical heating system uh, to uh, for preheating purposes. So, uh, now at any case there are local hot spots in the intake manifold. So, we call this as a localized wall surface and for example, if you look at this particular figure, here air is drawn, fuel is introduced. So, in the carburetor, so either they mix air and fuel mixture, they goes 
and when they goes, they goes as a jet and that hits on a surface and this we call this as a hot spot surface. Now, the how do you in, uh, and also we expect that the temperatures that goes into the cylinder that should be roughly higher than uh, 60 degree centigrade. So, to maintain this charge at 60 degree centigrade, we require a electrical heating system. So, uh, and here the equation that we are going to use that is a convection equation Q is equal to H A T W minus T gas. So, T W is nothing but the wall that is maintained at the temperatures. So, obviously, if you need uh, 60 degree centigrade as intake system, we the wall temperature should be much higher than this. And this heat is being supplied through heating systems and this is in line with the concept that the charge should be as hot as possible or engine should run as in hot conditions. And uh, what are the different uh, effects if you do not uh, have? And of course, during the uh, this process, convective heating take the lead in the intake manifold first thing, and uh, and if you, if you do this, we will have the early fuel vaporization, and this helps us in creating a homogeneous mixture in SI engine. And for CI engine, we require preheating this will allow the minimum temperature at the beginning of the compression stroke. So, these are the advantages that we get, but both the effects have a potential problem of engine knock that means, we should not preheat such a very high temperature. So, that at the eventually after the compression the cylinder temperature could be very high as a result it can result in knock. So, the side effect of intake heating is first thing is creates a knock. Other effect is that it reduces the volumetric efficiency of the engine, because when you have high temperature it reduces air density, vaporized fuel displaces some of the air. So, uh, because of this these are the side effects, but still we people use intake heating system to, um, but with a control over the uh, knock and uh, and by regulating adequate amount of heating or fuel into the uh, intake system. Then the heat transfer mechanism in the combustion chamber. So, I mentioned earlier that we have a stagnant layer of the gases and this particular figure shows the cross section of a cylinder wall of a liquid cooled engine and a air cooled engines. So, let us first think about the uh, liquid cooled engines. So, you mentioned here that in this particular domain we have a stagnant layer of hot gases. So, this hot due to this region, this to this region there is a strong gradient of uh, heat transfer from coefficient at the inner wall and of course, the coolant temperature also will have in the range of 105 degree centigrade if it starts from 1000 degree centigrade otherwise this number will also be high. So, uh, at any case if you provide cooling and an average of 1000 degree centigrade is expected at the inner wall of the cylinder surface. Now, if you look at the air cooled engines typically we, we have fins here and we all know that fins enhances this heat transfer and this mode of heat transfer is conduction and here uh, only uh, only uh, in the part of when it at the end of the fin, hmm, this is the mode of the convection that heat is transferred from uh, fin to air. So, basically speaking in both the cases two modes are important one is convection other is conduction. So, conduction is predominant within the wall. and fin, whereas convection is inner wall, outer wall that means hot gas to inner wall 
and outward wall to coolant gas. So, this is these two modes are predominantly important. So, this concept I have already mentioned that conduction and convection are two dominant modes of heat transfer in the combustion chamber. And also another significant part is there the heat transfer coefficient is fairly constant for coolant side and its heat transfer coefficient vary over a large range of engine cycle during at the uh, inner wall of the engine or the hot gas location. So, this is the two important concept uh, that needs to be understood. So, similarly for air cooled also engine also we have hot gases and we have air as coolant. So, these two points needs to be understood that in the combustion chamber one needs to focus. Uh, in many situation what happens in order to enhance this heat transfer coefficient we require a kind of a mechanism what we call many a times we call as a turbulence or swirl to uh, average uh, temperature within the engine cylinder and, and just to avoid that we do not have a drastic reduction in convective heat transfer coefficients. So, this is the reason that we require many a times we require the uh, turbulence or swirl mechanism to control the convective heat transfer coefficient within the engine cylinder for gas side. But however, we do not uh, uh, show much, much interest in the thermal conductivity of the cylinder material because it is a uh, it's fairly con constant within the working range and of course, it is a function of wall temperatures. Now, this particular plot shows that uh, for a given engine cycle maybe if you plot the uh, if you want to quantify the what is the magnitude of surface heat flux uh, during a part, uh, for a given cycle we can see we can expect a uh, heat flux about close to 1.5 or 1.7 megawatt per meter square and these numbers are function of crank angle. So, this particular first plot shows that local heat flux variation at a single location in a three consecutive cycle and this plot shows local heat variations at three different locations during one cycle. So, roughly we can have the values little bit in this range. So, roughly in the range we can have two, we can have uh, 1.75 and we can have 1. So, these numbers are different because they, they are three different locations, but on an average we can say roughly these numbers are about 1.7 uh, megawatt per meter squares. So, you can expect this kind of temperature range within the uh, cylinder. Now, let us go something about heat transfer modeling. So, for to heat transfer modeling please refer this particular figure that we need to look into. So, as I mentioned there are three modes conduction, convection and radiation. Let us see that how these modes are relevant at different locations within the combustion chamber. First thing a general equation can be written that overall heat transfer uh, per unit area of the cylinder if you look at with respect to Q is equal to total Q by A and here the first case it is the convection. So, the numerator part of this uh, equation has two extreme temperatures that is T g minus T c that is gas temperature and the coolant temperature and lower part of this expression or denominator has three components one is the this is nothing but the resistance to the heat transfer. 
So, one is convective resistance 1 by H g, conduction resistance that is across this wall and third is resistance uh, convective resistance due to coolant. So, 1 by H g delta x by k and 1 by H c. So, these are the three components that are relevant in these three locations and similarly here. So, this this is nothing but the or cylinder wall and this uh, and here the cylinder wall has uh, shapes of uh, has given at the uh, given the shapes and the outer side as a shape of the fin. So, once you have this this is one way of modeling other way let us find one by one if you look at only heat transfer due to the conduct convection then one thing we have to use this fundamental equation q is equal to h g minus t g minus t c gas temperature and uh, T c and one of the critical fact of this equation that calculating this uh, H g because this H g is varying drastically uh, along in a small uh, domain and this numbers is varies drastically in a very small domain and it is very difficult to control this value. So, one way of looking at this particular uh, value of H g is you calculate the Nusselt number. So, Nusselt number as a function of H g and k whereas, k is nothing but the thermal conductivity of gas side which is fairly constant as for a given temperature and we have also we know that B stands here as the engine bore and uh, the Nusselt number can also be related to Reynolds number because the when you look at the boundary layer study, then we can correlate thermal boundary layer with the velocity boundary layer through a relation Nusselt number and Reynolds number equation. Now, Reynolds number also can be found out if you know mass flow rate of air, mass flow rate of the fuel and here A p is nothing but area and mu is the viscosity of the gas film and A p is your piston phase area. So, this is how we model the convective heat transfer coefficient. In many instances, we also think about engine wall if you are very specific to exact calculation by incorporating radiation, then we can use recall our radiation equations and by considering the Stephen Boltzmann constant, V factor and emissivity of gas and wall material by using the equation for radiations. So, this is how people look at the modeling of combustion chamber uh, with respect to heat transfer. Of course, I have mentioned most of the things, but here the critical part is that uh, heat transfer in SI engine is about 2 megawatt per meter square and for CI engine it can go up to 10 megawatt per meter square. Ah, another part is that uh, concept of radiation is mostly occur for CI engines. Normally, we do not take into account the uh, radiation losses in uh, uh, SI engines because uh, even though gas temperature is high, radiation amounts only 10 percent of the total heat transfer. This is experimentally proven and another part is that when you look at the radiation, we look at the um, emissivity property of the gases that comes out and for SI engines these numbers are not uh, these numbers are not significant because they do not emit at given or specific wavelength. Whereas, in CI engines this becomes uh, significant because known mainly the carbon suit particles that is a critical part and they are very significant with respect to radiation and with, re and with respect to their wavelength. Another important segment is the heat transfer in the exhaust system. Uh, so, heat transfer is uh, exhaust system is uh, required if you look at this particular plot which is a Nusselt number plot for uh, with mass flow of the exhaust. So, which you can say that this Nusselt number also increasing for a steady flow and for a exhaust flow. So, when it is increasing it shows that there is a significant amount of heat that is uh, that is carried away by this exhaust flow. So, for this reason 
people look different modeling to tap the exhaust gas. And one way of looking at is that and since the engine runs in a cyclic manner, what we see is that a model what we call as a presidio uh, steady state exhaust temperature model in which we can say that this methodology or this modeling will tell us that how much time uh, the heat transfer uh, will enhance if similar condition is run for a steady flow. So, for example, if you use this particular model and run the engine in a for a steady flow case, then we can say that through this analysis the exhaust system carries about 1.5 times value of the steady flow, because these numbers are continuously increasing. So, at one given locations we cannot exactly found out the uh, actual number. So, uh, instead of taking entire cyclic average people take, take about a simple model where a steady flow analysis value is followed and but then you take a factor of 1.5 to tap or to calculate the what is the content of exhaust heat in the um, uh, outlet of the engine. So, this is all about the engine uh, heat transfer analysis. Now, we will look into the certain important segment that is effect of engine operating variables on heat transfer. Now, the heat transfer within the engine depends on many variables like engine size, engine speed, engine load, spark timing, equivalence ratio, evaporative cooling, inlet air temperature, coolant temperature, engine material, compression ratio, knock and swirl and squeeze. And all these things have a very global effect in terms of heat transfer. So, let us see what are the criticality involved in each of the operating variables. First thing is engine size. Now, when you look at the engine size and if you have two different uh, two geometrically similar engines of but different size or different displacements uh, and they run at same speed. Then the larger in, uh, engine will have a greater heat loss, but it is more thermally efficient. So, that means a larger engine will have a more heat transfer, but it is more efficient. Uh, because the energy generated is proportional to the cube of the length, so heat losses goes up to the square of the length. So, that means a combustion chamber with high volume to surface ra air ratio is always desirable for a good thermal efficiency. So, because uh, of this reason manufacturers explore mainly a kind of a L head engines that has gives a uh, improvement in the thermal efficiency. So, engine size has a definite role in, in heat transfer. Now, let us see engine speed obviously, when you run at engine very high speed the gas velocity also increases, it increases the turbulence, convective heat transfer coefficients thereby heat transfer in every in, uh, uh, stroke always increases. That means, higher speed means higher heat transfer and it is quite obvious also. And during combustion and power stroke the gas velocities within the cylinder is fairly independent of engine speed. because they are controlled by surreal squeeze and combustion motion. And here the convection heat transfer coefficient is fairly independent of engine speed. Radiation is also important, but during, uh, but during certain portion of the cycle. At higher engine speed, what is your expector? That, uh, expectation that there is a less time per cycle when you, the combustion occurs at same rotation or same burn angle for all speeds and when the at higher speed when the time cycle is less then the time of combustion is also less. So, as a result we leads to the chances of self ignition and lock. So, since there is a less time of heat transfer in the cycle, so engine runs hotter. It means 
hotter engine is a greater risk for knock. So, this is uh, engine speed has is a very huge impact on engine knock and that is mainly due to higher temperature or heat transfer. Another uh, significant location is the blow down process where we expect a sonic velocity at the ex ex exhaust valve and that point the flow is almost choked. So, this process is independent of engine speed, but when engine speed is higher the blow down process lasts over a larger engine rotation angle and this results uh, hotter exhaust valve and ports. Hence, gases in the exhaust systems are hotter at higher engine speed. Okay. So, next point is uh, engine load. So, obviously, when engine load increases the throttle must be opened to keep the uh, speed of the engine constant and mass flow rate also goes up. So, when this happens the heat transfer also uh, goes up because it is a function of Reynolds number I have mentioned earlier. The engine knock mostly occurs at higher loads and since there is a knock, so there is a localized increase in the temperature and heat transfer. So, engine temperature increases with increase in the load. For CI engine are typically on throttle for which mass flow rate is independent of load and here the convection heat transfer coefficient is fairly independent of engine load. So, CI uh, engines runs normally at high loads, but uh, here heat transfer coefficient is not important because it is fairly constant. Then we have a spark timing. So, spark timing that is mainly required for SI engines. So, more power and temperature is generated when the spark setting is set to give maximum pressure and temperature and typically this is this done by before after uh, 5 to 10 degree uh, TDC. So, this high temperature creates a high momentary heat loss, but over a very short time, but if the spark occurs too early or late it will have a impact on combustion efficiency and average temperature. Next point is fuel equivalence ratio. So, theoretically it has been mentioned that heat release is maximum when engine when the engine runs at stoichiometric combustion that is phi is equal to 1, but any case it does not happen. So, engine requires very high octane uh, rating, so heat loss has to occur, but when we are running in the lean condition. So, there will be lower heat loss and adding to adding one point here that for CI engines they are normally run at lean conditions. So, obviously, it will they will incur heat lower heat loss. This evaporation cooling, the evaporation cooling co concept comes at two locations one is intake manifold other is the uh, other is the during the spray or injection. Uh, in the uh, cylinder. So, what happens if when there is evaporative cooling it lowers the intake temperatures and rises the latent heat that is at the intake manifold. Other location also when it happens in the uh, combustion chamber it uh, creates a significant impact for the subsequent fuel it requires more and more fuel into the combustion chamber. Uh, because it creates cooling for the subsequent fuel. So, for this reason uh, uh, the evaporating cooling has a detrimental effect that it reduces the heat transfer. Intake air temperature and coolant temperature. So, obviously, we already told that we need to run the engine or for charge the, uh, the charge into the engine should be allowed as in a hotter conditions to maximize the efficiency. 
but with a limit of uh, knock. So, the condition of inlet temperature will improve the uh, engine efficiency, but at the same time it should have certain regulation, so that it should not create a knock situation. Of course, engine materials as I mentioned always engine materials ensure the thermal endurance. So, the manufacturer of the engine uh, engines they use those uh, kind of materials for which have very high thermal endurance and typically ceramic faced pistons uh, are used because they have poor thermal conductivity because they should not take into the heat at the same time they have high thermal uh, endurance. Compression ratio increase in the compression ratio decreases the heat transfer slightly it is mainly due to the uh, combustion characteristics. For CI engines operate at high compression ratio and they have less exhaust temperature. Knock always creates high heat transfer, high pressure and temperature plus pulses in a localized uh, uh, spots. Squeal or squeeze they, they affect the convective heat transfer coefficient within the engine cylinder and this they give a better heat transfer to the wall. So, roughly if you look at all these parameters have some resemblance among each other that and the net results that they show as a heat transfer, but how they are going to affect the final efficiency or final performance of the engine. And the last concept that I am going to discuss is the adiabatic engines. So, I mentioned that thermal en endurance is one particular part with respect to manufacturing point of view of engine materials at high temperatures. And we expect but that is because we expect the engine should operate as hot as possible. Second thing is the energy that is converted to the soft work is about 30 percent of the fuel energy. And 30 percent of the energy goes uh, almost as a waste. So, roughly if you say one fourth of energy saved is available when work is generated and 30 percent of this energy is utilized. Now, out of this heat loss if we say we can tap 10 percent of the heat loss that means, if you can reutilize this 10 percent of low grade energy then it accounts to about improvement in 1 percent in the high grade energy or in terms of cranks of power. So, P these are the estimate that allows the designers that to think about if can I save that 1 percent of soft power. So, if, if they can save they it, it is a good bonus for them. So, for this reason the concept of adiabatic engine engine is introduced and it assumes there is no heat losses, but they do have reduced heat losses from the combustion chamber. These engines do not have any cooling mechanism, there is no cooling mechanism and these heat losses are only due to natural convection of exterior to the surfaces and engine runs with hotter components with some gain in brake power. But for this to happen we require very advanced material technology to fabricate the engine components without any mechanical or thermal power. So, the recent development people think of adiabatic engines uh, mostly in the compression ignition because that is also doable options because we have uh, we have a larger space to work with because these engines are typically larger in size and these are the recent development in the automobile sector. So, this is all about the heat transfer study in the engines 
Now, on this particular, so let us see that we have a uh, the given problem we have a 3 liter 5 cylinder 4 stroke SI engines and here you see it is a cylinder wall and here uh, the cylinder wall to has two parts one is inner wall other is the outer wall and the inner wall has gas temperature T g and outer wall the heat is taken away by the coolant that is the temperature T c. There are two heat transfer coefficients we have H g and H c that is from hot gas side other is the coolant side and we have a finite temperature uh, or the length delta x in between this. So, the question it is asked uh, the, uh, we have the distance of uh, or what we say thickness of this wall is delta x of course, uh, this is required if the thermal conductivity calculation needs to be done or heat transfer due to conduction needs to be required. But the question here is asked that we need to calculate the convective heat transfer to the engine cylinder at a one particular instance. So, whatever data that has been given uh, is listed here 3 cylinder uh, sorry 3 liter 5 cylinder 4 stroke SI 300 rpm and volumetric efficiency of 80 percent this is required for mass of uh, mass flow rate of air calculations stroke is 1.1 times bore. So, engine is uses gasoline fuel with equivalence ratio of 0.9 at certain point in the engine cycle the gas temperature is 2000 degree Kelvin centigrade wall temperature is 180 degree centigrade. So, the solution of the problem we should start with the first basic equation of heat transfer for conduct convection mainly convection because this mode of heat transfer is convection Q is equal to H times T g uh, or I can say H g that is gas side T g minus T uh, wall. So, T g is given to us 2000 degree centigrade. So, this number will be 2273 Kelvin T c is 180 degree centigrade and this number is 453 Kelvin. To calculate these two we require H g. Now, you have to recall our modeling to uh, that when you do such kind of calculation for convective heat transfer coefficients we must recall Nusselt number versus Reynolds number relations. So, Nusselt number is for this is H g B, B stands for bore by K g g stands for the subscript g stands for gas side and this has a empirical relations with Reynolds number as C 1 R 2 uh, Reynolds number to the power C 2. Now, uh, uh, I can recall that these numbers we can get from the data book uh, and from the data book for hot engine gases these numbers I can uh, say that the constant C 1 as 0.035 this value you can refer the book C 2 as 0.8 K g that is at average temperature of engine operation the thermal conductivity of gas side is to be referred as 0.09 watt per meter Kelvin. Another number also we require subsequently mu g that is coefficient of viscosity this is 5.2 into 10 to the power minus 5 kg by meters second. So, if you calculate have this then we can calculate this, but here another issue what we need is Reynolds number. So, Reynolds number you have to revisit this equation m dot a plus m dot f b divided by a p into mu g 
So, you see here mu g is required here, the Reynolds number calculations. A p, a p is nothing but piston phase area pi by 4 b square. So, we require b and to have this then we need to calculate from this uh, uh, volume that is displacement volume that is v d we can write as pi by 4 b square s that is equal to 3000 divided by 5 because it is a 5 cylinder that is equal to 600 centimeter cube and b and s is equal to 1.1 b. So, from this equation we can calculate what is b as uh, 8.84 centimeter or 0 0.0884 meter. So, in we know b then we can calculate AP that is 0 0.006235 meter square. Okay. So, AP is known is known what, rec what other thing is required? Now, we need to calculate mass flow rate of air and fuel. So, for mass for fuel you require air calculations. So, M dot A can be written as volumetric efficiency multiplied by density area of air multiplied by displacement volume and n divided by n small n. So, all the data are given here volumetric efficiency is 80 percent or I can write 0 0.08 point 8 density of air we can recall as 1.18 kg per meter cube displacement volume is nothing but 3000 by 5 600 centimeter cube n is 3000 rpm small n is 2 that is number of uh, uh, n is 2 for a uh, SI engine or 4 stroke engine. Uh, so, m dot a can be calculated by putting these values and this number will be about 0 0.145 sorry 0 0.0 0.0145 kg per second. So, once you know mass flow rate of air, then we can calculate mass flow rate of fuel that is nothing but mass flow rate of air divided by 5 times equivalence ratio times air fuel ratio stoichiometric value. And m dot a is 0 0.0145 divided by phi is 0 0.9 air fuel value stoichiometric value is 14.6. So, this number would be 0 0.0011 kg per second. So, we know m a m f. So, from that equation Reynolds number equation we can calculate as uh, Reynolds number as 4, 2, 5, 3. So, once you know the Reynolds number, we can find out H g from the previous equation nothing but 0 0.035 to the power 0 0.8 then 0 0.09 divided by 0 0.0884 this number would be 28.5 watt per meter square kelvin. So, 
when you know hg then we can calculate q is hg times 28.5 times uh, 23 2273 minus uh, 453 that is tg minus tc and this is hg so this value would be 51.87 kilowatt per meter square so this is a very simple example that can be given as a heat transfer and mainly people use the heat transfer in ic engine only at the combustion chamber okay so with this i will conclude the discussion for today thank you for your attention